There's Oleg over there getting ready for the water. This is where we are. Beautiful area. Man, the stars last night were just amazing. So my wife is gonna watch me suicide jump in here. Oh you bastard! Oh it's warm! Hey everybody! Today July 30. 2011 Very sound Big power wow <laughs> And a big cannonball <laughs> Run hey <laughs> <laughs> Where is your uh, coast? Three hours. <laughs> <laughs> you go next coast. <laughs> Can't see the bottom. There was the question, how many Indians does it take to build a teepee? Takes three Indians and a Russian. This is the way you sew your teepee, sew your teepee, sew your teepee. New teepee, and there was the idea that the guys could paint it beautifully. Hello, this is Mark. He's going to be trying out a flute and I'm just going to be accompanying him on the drum. Can I see your name? I'm just working just because I'm in window, give one minute. You know what I'm saying? If they say, you have to hear.
My family is here. This is my side of the family. They came for the weekend. Oh yeah, there's uh this is a channel, a hay bay, there's a bay in there. And you can go in there by boat and that's where they do all their fishing. And here too, there's a lot of pike in here, trout. And Perry Sound is just out that way. If you just go out by boat and around the corner, you'll see mm. Perry Sound. Mm. Oh, so they, uh, can they also take a boat? Oh yeah, they bring their boats. I have canoes down there. Mm. They rent, you know, when they're here. Mm. And then they're swimming down here. They go swimming. And when they, when the ones that have private, we go out to the go to the point there. Oh. So they camp some camp over there, over here, over there. Like you know, it's in their buildings. But you know, it's uh, basically rough campage. You know. Look at you can hear those kids across the bay. My wife's a school teacher. She's an Ojibwe teacher. She teaches an uh, Ojibwe language in the uh, private sector and the uh, non-native schools. The provincial school. Yeah, the provincial school. So <laughs> there's a lot of non-native kids are in there and you know they all run right to her you know so she's like a, a native teacher in a, in a white society like helping them you know like they don't feel like they're in the right spot yeah. when they see her yeah you better smile doggy <laughs> look at you ha 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 mommy look at this <laughs> But all those teachings are from elders, like guys from another First Nation. We share stories, so like you know, and we pass it on to our young ones. And usually, when the, the Russians have their kids about this time, Asin, I'll tell them native stories around the fire. Storytelling. Yeah. Storytelling time, right? And they love it. You know, they just love it. I have all kinds of stories for little hey, kids, where you going? Hey, medium hey, kids, hey, hey. and the elders, right? Like even what I was taught, an elder can learn. From other people, it doesn't matter how old they become. You can always share and learn, and that's the way I feel. Like, like, yeah. But I teach the opposite. I'm a. I'm not like a traditional Indian. I'm a, a neutral. Like a, a traditional Indian is like, you have to be born. Your 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 body has to be cleansed with like no alcohol, no tobacco, and your bloodline has to be like that through from the next generation before it comes to you. So that bloodline has to be clean and clear. And you start learning the language at a very young age, the culture at a very young age. And then when you become, they call steps and levels of being traditional. And being a recovering alcoholic, I can never go there because I've already uh, corrupted my body with alcoholism and all that. But learning my culture, I woke up. I said, well, I'm Indian. I'm proud to be Indian. You know, how can I help my young ones? The only way to do that was sober up and do what I'm supposed to do. Why did I go to college for? To be a drunk? No, there's got to be other reasons. So being a, a, a storyteller and writing books now, I feel that being a neutral Indian, I don't downgrade the traditions. I don't downgrade anybody. I just teach the goodness that comes out of your heart into your brain that goes out and that comes back in because say say you fell down you broke your leg you know everybody just walk right by you because you're, you're you're not Indian well if I stop and pick you up and help you to your car or take you to the hospital I feel good inside my heart I feel good because I helped you that's strength and my power in my body to get makes me stronger because I help somebody that's in need that's my gift and then I, I'm happy. Then I can go around. Like you guys, the other day at church, it was a coincidence how we met, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's just the way I am. I, I'm, uh, I kind of touch people with just the way I speak because uh, I was always told that our culture is not a prejudice. It's you share what you can about mother nature, the water, the fire, because us human beings are just like Mother Earth. You know, we got uh, the leaves. If we don't have the leaves, oxygen, we can't breathe. Don't have the water, the plants can't drink. Don't have fire, can't keep warm. So the, that's the way the native people look at it. So 
how I got that knowledge was becoming sober, mm -hmm. seeing, you know, like, seeing uh, the life on, uh, on uh, say, here's a line. Mm -hmm. I'm too busy, drunk, staggering all over the place. I, I, I don't see, I can't see Mother Nature grow. I can't see my family grow. So I step over on the sober side of the line. Now I can watch the trees grow, smell the beautiful air, watch my nephews and nieces grow, tell them stories, and that's strength. That's my gift. And what I get for, for my gift is my, my strength, my business. I'm a tree climber, I climb trees. I climb about, oh, 150 big trees like that, bigger than that. I give back, I receive something back inside my heart, you know. So I give you guys some of my teaching. You guys probably say, wow, man. Thank you. So you guys got to come back, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a nice place. Even with your guide, your friend, you got to bring him. Like, you know, all my brothers and sisters are always welcome. Like Christian Island, they came and stayed with me the other night, so you know, I, you know good friends of mine. I have friends all over the place. Hey, we are on the ship Island Queen and we are taking a two hours journey among all the beautiful 13,000 islands of Georgian Bay and we are seeing amazing places like dynamite factory and native burial grounds and place where the TV series The Res were made in white people's territory and uh, there is lots of sand and fish and people who are waving at us and huge dogs that are barking at us from the docks and this is the best kind of holiday you can have. <laughs> Doing it telepathically, messages. Species of wildlife that is intimately connected to Georgian Bay, it's the Eastern Massasauga rattlesnake, Ontario's only venomous snake. In fact, Georgian Bay is the primary location in Ontario where these snakes are found. Well, again, we're going through the hole in the wall. We've just gone through the hole most in the wall. It's a very popular spot deep, with campers and cottagers. Deep part of the months. shallowest part is only 13 feet deep. deep. Numerous tents and boats scattered so. along the shoreline while their occupants die from the channel's cliffs. <laughs>